Okay, well today we're going to solve differential equations and we're going to do that graphically and algebraically. Now to be honest with you, I already made this video once before and then I thought it recorded and the whole thing didn't record. Bum er. So as I do this again, when we solve equations, the solution has to meet three different criteria. First of all, it has to satisfy the domain of the differential equation on an open interval. Now, why is it open interval? Well, because derivatives, they are not defined at endpoints because you can't have a limit from the left and the right. Also, the domain of the differential equation needs to be identified prior to solving. So you can check to see if your solution fits within the domain. Second, your solution must be a function. In other words, it has to pass the vertical line test. And practically speaking, when you're graphing it, it means that the solution cannot cross a vertical asymptote. Very important. And the third criteria is that if you're given a point that the solution goes through, it has to, of course, contain that condition. So let's do an example together. So number one, we are given the differential equation x over y. Well, let's talk about, first of all, what is the domain of this given differential? Well, we know in a fraction that the denominator cannot equal zero. So therefore, y cannot equal zero. So the range then would be written in such a way that it would be negative infinity to zero, but not including zero, and then from zero to infinity. Okay, well, what about x? Well, x can equal all real numbers. So we can go from negative infinity to infinity. Fantastic, that lets us know the limits of our solution. Now, when I look at the differential equation graphed on the slope field, right here to the right, does this agree? In other words, look at the range. Look at the y values at zero. What do you notice? Well, I notice that there are no slope fields when y is zero, and that matches exactly with what we were given. I also notice that when x is zero, they're all horizontal tangent lines, which makes sense because if x equals zero, then that means on the differential equation, I would have a zero divided by some value of y. Well, zero divided by y is always zero. Fantastic. So now let us sketch a solution on this slope field if we're given the specific point zero one. So whenever you're asked to do that, you always graph the point first, zero one. And then what we do is we follow closely, we're parallel to the slope fields. So if I start at zero one and go to the right, I'm going to run parallel to the slope fields. See how my equation, my solution there, I'm sorry, is parallel to the slope fields? Now I'm gonna do the same toward negative infinity. And my solution runs parallel to the slope fields. So this is what I am conjecturing is the solution to the differential equation going through zero one. Okay, now let's see if this solution, the graphical solution matches the algebraic solution. So you'll notice in part C, the directions say find a solution. Whenever you see that, that means we're gonna solve for Y. So given that you're, you have dy dx is equal to x over y. In order to solve for y, this is when we separate, integrate, integrate, add a c, okay? So I'm gonna move the y over, so I'm gonna have y dy is equal to x dx. So that's separate. If this was an FRQ, you get one stinking point just for doing that. Okay, now let's proceed. We're gonna integrate, integrate. So when I integrate then, the integral of y is y squared over two, and the integral of x is x squared over two. Believe it or not, you get one point each for each integration. So now we're up to three points. Separate, integrate, integrate, add a c, add a c. And you get another point if you add a c. Woohoo! Now this is called the general solution for my differential equation. Now it's general because it could be any value of c, but we are given a specific point and we need to find what's called the particular solution. So we're gonna plug zero, one and find the value of c given this point. So I'd have one squared over two is equal to zero squared over two, which is just zero. So c is equal to one half. So then our particular, now we're gonna solve for the particular solution given this value of c. 
So I have y squared over 2 equals x squared over 2 plus 1 half. Okay, folks, let's solve for y. So we're going to multiply everything by 2. So I get y squared equals x squared plus 1. Then I take the square root of both sides. Now we all know the square root of y squared is the absolute value of y. Right, folks? Okay. Now again, I'm solving for y, so now I need to undo the absolute value, which is equal to the plus or minus square root of x squared pl plus 1. Now, is it just the positive square root of x squared plus 1, or is it the negative square root of x squared plus 1? Because remember, it can't be both, because then it would not be a function. It wouldn't pass the function test. So let's check, given the point 0, 1. So given the point 0, 1, which part of the equation will make this value true? So let's try the positive part first. So given y is 1 equals positive square root of 0 squared plus 1. Well, look at that. 1 equals 1. Woohoo! Now you want to check the negative one? Sure, why not, Cliver? So then I get 1 equals the negative square root of 0 squared plus 1. Well, of course, 1 does not equal negative 1. So that means then our particular solution is the positive square root of x squared plus 1. Nice. Now, part D says, what is the domain and range of your solution? Now, I'm going to look at the algebraic solution in conjunction with the graphical solution. And together, I'm going to decide on the domain. Well, if you look at the graph, what values of x make this graph true? Well, all values of x make that true. Now, does that work for the algebraic portion also? Could any value of x be used? Well, yes, because any negative number squared is going to be positive, and then you'll have a positive in the radical. Woohoo! Now, what about the range? Well, look at the graph. We notice that the range, the minimum of this solution is in one. So that means the range then is going to include one and go to infinity. Fantastic. Now let's check our three conditions. First of all, does the domain of the solution fit within the differential equation? So here is my domain and range. Let's see if this domain and range fit within the given domain and range of the differential. So in other words, I'm going to go right back up here and look here. Does this domain and range satisfy? So notice the range cannot include 0. Well, look here. We're not including 0 in our range. Great. And the domain up here in part A just has to be all real numbers. Well, that's true here. So yes, the domain and range of our solution fits the domain and range of the differential. Is the solution a function? Well, yes, my solution, my graph, passes the vertical line test. And last of all, does the solution satisfy the initial condition? Why, yes, we checked it right here. And the value 0, 1 does make this equation true. Now, this is the first example. I'm going to do a couple more, but I'll split it into two videos so it's not too much overload.